Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about radian and degree measures. So first, let's talk about some definitions. A central angle of a circle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So if we have the center of a circle, I'll just draw it in for each of these. Then a vertex, a uh, central angle, excuse me, could look like this. It could look like this. It could look like this but it could not look like this. This has a different name. I think that's called an inscribed angle. So this one is not a central angle, but any of these three would be central angles because the one thing is that their vertex, uh, the, the center of the circle is the vertex of the angle. Another definition. Um, so this one we're probably familiar with, and that's the idea of uh, degrees as a unit of measure. Degrees are a unit of measure for the interior of an angle. For the notation, um, so if we're looking at an angle measure that's n degrees, we would say n and then use the little degree sign. Uh, and then generally when we draw an angle, um, we might put it like this so that we know, we put a little arc in there, so that we know which is the interior. Because technically we could have an angle like this where we're saying, nope, this is the interior of that angle. Degrees date back to ancient Greek and Babylonian times. You know, nothing's like super precise here. Uh, and that begs the question, why is a circle 360 degrees? So if we think about a circle, we say that that measure is 360 degrees. Um, no one knows for sure, but what makes the most sense to me and, and what's pretty commonly accepted is that 360 is very close to 365, which is the number of days in a year, which would be a complete circle around the sun. So that kind of makes sense, but then why not 365? Well. Probably because 360 has a ton of divisors, whereas 365, I think, has four. So 360 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 18. Okay, you get the idea. 365 is divisible by 1, 5, 365, and one other thing. So probably 360 just because of that. Okay, there's another unit of measure that we use to measure angles and that's called radians. So this is just another measure that we use. Generally, we do not write a unit for radians. You are welcome to write rad if you feel like you need to include a unit, but generally speaking, we, we would just say that the angle measure is two pi over three or something like that. This is a newer unit of measure. It was first used, probably, in the early 1700s, and then actually first named radians in 1873. So why radians? Well, the naturalness of its relationship to circles. So one complete circle is two pi radians. So if we have a circle, we would say that this angle measure, quote unquote, is two pi radians, right? And that's the same thing as 300, ah, what have I done? That's the same thing as 360 degrees. Um, why two pi? Well, because that's also the measure of the circumference. So it kind of makes sense. So if we have a circumference of a circle with radius one, excuse me, let me be very explicit here. So if we have a radius of one, the circumference would be two pi um, because it'd be two pi r, which is two pi. So that's why we like radians um, and they're frequently used. Also, when we get into trigonometry, um, they, they end up just working out really nicely. So a quick note. Uh, and we're going to talk more about this in another lecture, but it, it's somewhat relevant here, so I figure I'll bring it up now, at least introduce it. Uh, in trigonometry, angle measures can be positive or negative depending on the direction of the rotation. Frequently in trigonometry, we look at angles in the coordinate plane whose vertices lie on the origin. So here's the coordinate plane, and we think of angles whose uh, vertex, so I put down here vertice, vertices, is the plural of the word vertex. So it sounds a little weird. So let's see. So an angle in standard position, and again, there's another video for this, would typically look something like this. And then generally what we do is we draw not only an arc, I mentioned we draw an arc to represent the interior of the angle, but when we're talking about angles in trigonometry, we also put an arrow to indicate the direction that we went. So I drew my arrow going counterclockwise, therefore that angle measure would be positive. If I was to draw another one, and I put the arrow this way, that would be a counterclockwise, uh, sorry, that would be a clockwise motion, which indicates that the angle measure is negative. Okay, so one important thing 
is we want to be able to quickly convert between degrees and radians. Um, probably because we feel more comfortable in degrees, so if something's given in radians, we might prefer it to be in degrees because we kind of get it better. Um, but also radians are much more useful in trigonometry, so it's good to be able to go from degrees to radians. Okay, so how do we convert? Well, before we talk about the conversion, I mentioned on a previous slide that 360 degrees is uh, equal to two pi radians. If we put this in a fraction, so if I said 360 degrees over two pi, or if I said two pi over 360 degrees, both of those fractions are called unit rates. And they're a unit because they technically equal one. 360 degrees is the same thing as two pi, so these technically equal one, so that would be considered a unit rate. Okay, so we're gonna use that unit rate to help us convert. If we're gonna go from radians into degrees, so we have, we're given something in radians, so this thing is radians, what we do is we take that measure and we multiply it, and we actually use, so you see up here I chose 360 over two pi or two pi over 360, however, two and 360 are both divisible by two, so generally speaking, we're not gonna use the full circle, we're gonna use a half circle and we're gonna use, um, in this case, if we're gonna convert out of it radians, we would use 180 degrees over pi. So that's just taking that unit rate of 360 over two pi and dividing it by two. And then what's gonna happen here is that the, the measure of radians should be have a pi in it. The pi's will end up canceling, leaving us with just this unit of degrees. If we wanna convert to, from degrees into radians, so I'm given some angle measure and it's in degrees, I'm gonna use the upside down, the reciprocal unit rate, which would be multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. Let's look at some examples. So we're gonna convert each of the following from radians into degrees, starting with pi over three. So again, we're gonna take that radian measure, pi over three, we're gonna multiply it by 180 degrees over pi. Let's simplify before we multiply. So the unit of pi, or the factor of pi cancels, Three goes into itself once and it goes into 180 60 times. Now I have one times 60 over one times one and we get 60 degrees. So pi over three is equivalent to 60 degrees. In the next example, we have two pi over three. To convert to radians, we're gonna multiply by 180 degrees over pi. The pi factors cancel and then three goes into itself once and it goes into 180, 60 times. Now we have two times 60 over one times one, which is 120. And that makes sense um, that it's double 60 because two pi over three is double pi over three. The last example, we are given a negative angle measure. And again, that's okay. That just means it went clockwise around the unit circle or in the coordinate plane. So we have negative seven pi over three. To convert it into degrees, we're gonna multiply by 180 degrees over pi. The pi's will cancel. Oh, another denominator of three, lovely. Uh, multiplying straight across, we end up with negative 420 degrees. So this one's negative 420 degrees. So that's some examples of looking at radians to degrees. Going the other direction from degrees to radians for 30 degrees. So remember what we do here, 30 degrees, we're gonna multiply by pi over 180. We wanna make sure that the units cancel. So you always know you have it upside down. If you put 180 over pi, you're gonna have degrees times degrees in the numerator, which is degrees squared, which I've never heard of and I don't think is a thing. Um, so you wanna make sure that there's one degree in the numerator and one in the denominator. Uh, we're gonna cancel out that unit, bye. And then we're gonna simplify what we can simplify. So 30 and 180, uh, 30 goes into itself once and it goes into 180 six times. Multiplying straight across, one times pi is pi, one times six is six. So 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over six. 90 degrees, we'll do the same thing. So 90 degrees times pi over 180 degrees, we'll put 90 over one, so the degree units cancel, and then we can simplify 90 goes into itself once, and it goes into 180 twice. Multiplying straight across, this turned to a one, so we can ignore it, we have pi over two. So 90 degrees is the equivalent of pi over two. Negative 225 degrees. So we're gonna say negative 225 degrees. I know we're gonna have a fraction, so I'll just turn it into a fraction. Times pi over 180 degrees. Degrees cancel. Okay, um, we have a common factor. Uh, I think it's 15, but we can start with five because most of us probably aren't gonna recognize that 
15 would go into both, so let's see what we get. We divide 225 by 5, and we get 45. We divide 180 by 5, we get 36. And yeah, 45 and 36, they're both divisible by 9. Ooh, it was bigger than 15. Let's divide these both by 9. 9 goes into 36 4 times, and 9 goes into 45 5 times. And that's the best that we can do. So we have negative times 5 times pi will be negative 5 pi over 4. And we want to make sure we, we were given something that was negative, so that our final answer should be negative as well. And this has been an introduction to units of angle measures.